context clues. Those six context clues, devices, and strategies that we've been going over. So, step five is we have to practice how to determine the word meaning. So how do we do that? Well, step one, you want to assess the tone and the mood. Step two, you want to identify the unknown words in the text. Step three, identify the figurative language, similes, metaphors, personification. And then step five, use those context clue strategies. So let's look at this example right here from a poem entitled Jabberwock. Beware the Jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jub jub bird and shun that frumious bender snatch. As, and as in uffish thought he stood, the Jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffing through the toji wood and burbled as it came. What? <laughs> There's a lot of words in there that are unknown that we don't recognize. But if we use the language, we can figure them out. So, First one, beware the Jabberwock son. Automatically, I'm assessing the tone and the mood. The mood of the poem as soon as I read it, beware. Beware is something that inspires me to be cautious, to be, um, to be on guard. So clearly the Jabberwock, even though I don't know the exact meaning, Jabberwock is something not to mess with. And then also, the next sentence, the next line, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. That's automatically, those are denotative words. Jaws, claws, those are actual meanings. There's nothing to be hidden. And that lets me know that the Jabberwock is an animal. Also, beware the Jabberwock, my son. So this is some type of plea from a father to a son. So the tone or the author's feeling that he's trying, that he's giving off is one where he wants his son to be safe. So he's giving him information about this Jabberwock. Then he goes on to give the son information about to beware of the Jub Jub bird. Now, we don't know what a Jub Jub is, but we do know that it's a bird. So we know that it can fly. It probably has wings. And we still know it's something that's dangerous because the father told us to beware, or the mother told us to beware. And then shun. Shun has a lot of negative connotative feelings to it. Shun means to ignore, to set aside. Where everyone is over here and you're over there, you're shunning something. The frumious bander snatch. Now, we have no clue what the word frumious means, but clearly it's an adjective that's describing another animal, a bander snatch. So clearly frumious is not a positive word. And as in huffish thought, huffish, that sounds like making a huff. So maybe this is something agitated. As in a huffish thought he stood, the jabberwock, so with eyes of flame, came whiffling through the toji wood. So um, now the author's talking about the jabberwock and the jabberwock is coming to them. So huffish may be that he's running with eyes of flame. So now we're getting some metaphors here. He has eyes of flame. Came whistling through the Tolji wood. So Tolji wood. So that's some type of trees. Maybe Tolji means thick wood and burbled as it came. Burble probably is the sound that the Jabberwock is giving off. So, what we simply did was we assessed the tone and the mood, we identified unknown words, we identified figurative language, and then we used context and strategies to figure out what in the world all those words meant. Let's try one more, shall we? This is the spot, said the professor as he turned his lamp on a small map of the house copied from the file of my original correspondence regarding the purchase. With a little trouble, we found the key on the bunch and opened the door. We were prepared for some unpleasantness, for as we were opening the door, faint malodorous air seemed to exhale through the gaps, but none of us ever expected such an odor as we encountered. None of the others had met the count at all close quarters, and when I had seen him, he was in the fast state of his existence in his rooms or when he was bloated with fresh blood in a ruined building open to the air but here 
The place was small and close, and the long disuse had made the air stagnant and foul. But as to the odor itself, how shall I describe it? It was not alone that it was composed of all the ills of mortality, and with the pungent, acrid smell of corruption had become itself corrupt. Corrupt. Far, it sickens me to think of it. Every breath exhaled by that monster seemed to have clung to the place and intensified its loathsomeness. Wow, great text. It has a lot of charged words. Words like unpleasantness, malodorous air, loathsomeness, stagnant, and foul. So clearly the author is not pleased with what he's having to do or where he's having to go or what he is experiencing. So automatically that creates a mood of apprehensive or a mood of just carefulness or even fear. So this is the spot as he turned his lamp on a small map of the house. As he turned his lamp, a lamp provides light. So I automatically know that somehow wherever he's at, it's dark. Darkness emotes suspense, mystery. On a small map of the house, copied from the file of my original correspondence regarding the purchase. So I have a word, correspondence. It says file. I know file has something to do with paper regarding the purchase. So maybe correspondence based on this means letter. I'm taking the denotative or the actual meaning of these two words to determine what correspondence means. We are prepared for un some unpleasantness. Once again, this puts me in a mood of uneasiness and also creates a mood of suspense, like I'm intrigued, I want to keep knowing more. And also unpleasantness. I know that the prefix un means not, so not pleasant. For as we were opening the door, a faint malodorous mal air seemed to excel. Hard word, hard word to even say, but we can still break it down. In the middle is odor. Mal means bad. So we know this word means bad odor. And this odor seemed to exhale throughout the gaps of the house. And it was an odor so bad that it wasn't expected. None of the others had met the count. Count. And it's capitalized. So this is obviously some kind, this is a person's house that they're going to. And based on this, the count's house is not a pleasant place to be. So maybe the count is not a good guy. And when I had seen him, he was either in the fastest stage of his existence or when he was bloated with fresh blood in a ruined building open to the air. So this count is typically bloated with fresh blood. Look at this metaphor right here. He was bloated with fresh blood blood. Wow, so maybe this is Count, Count Dracula, a vampire. Because he was bloated, means he had eaten fresh blood. But here, the place was small and close, and the long disuse had made the air stagnant and foul. So we automatically know that this is a ruined building, and it's really old. Some place where a vampire might want to live. But as, the odor to, but as to the odor itself, how shall I describe it? So now, the author's getting ready to use a lot of figurative language to really create in your mind a picture of how bad this place smelled. It was not alone that it was composed of all the ills of mortality and with the pungent, acrid smell of blood. So right here, the author was giving you some vivid language. Blood was pungent, acrid. We may not know what pungent and accurate mean, but we know that it's not good, and we know that it's a bad smell or odor. So we should be able to infer, using our context clue strategy, that pungent and accurate are just bad smells or odors, way to describe bad smells and odors, because they're adjectives describing the smell of the noun blood. Fa, ooh, it fa has an explanation point behind it. So when we see words that have an explanation point, we know that's usually like a common phrase like, oh my God, wow. Fa means, maybe fa means ugh, because after that it sickens me to think of it. So in essence, we literally took assessing the tone and mood, identifying the unknown words, 
identifying figurative language, using context clue strategies to help determine the word and meaning of unknown phrases. All right, let's get cracking on mastery. See you later.